Today's lesson is a topic that I know a lot of you have been anxious to study. It's all about dreams. Um, so first of all, some basics about dreams. Everybody has dreams. Like I said, when we talked about REM sleep, you're dreaming multiple times per night. Sometimes you can have a REM stage without having a dream, but mostly you're having some kind of a dream or something uh, in your brain when you're having REM sleep. And the trick is you're just not remembering them all. Um, you can be taught or teach yourself how to recall your dreams more often. Um, also, the emotion centers of your brain are often active during dreams, which is why they tend to be so emotionally charged or powerful. Uh, REM dreams, or sort of the typical dream that you have, are often pretty weird. Um, they have lots of imagery, lots of sound, intense emotion, and they feel really real. Um, they're prompted by different brain structures associated with different aspects of your thinking being activated while you're sleeping without conscious control or awareness. And so the reason dreams are so bizarre or sort of crazy is that you're not in, there's nobody in the driver's seat. There's no one in conscious control sort of directing your thinking so they can go kind of all over the place. Also, during a dream, you're not going to have any access to your waking or conscious concept of reality. So whatever's going on in the dream is going to feel very real because you have nothing to connect it to. Um, lots of people have asked me or wanted to learn what do dreams mean, right? Do they have a meaning? Can they foretell the future? Does it mean you have things that you desire that are unfulfilled? Does it have some kind of a value? Um, should we be ashamed of them? And the honest answer to these questions is that there is no answer to these questions. There's lots of different people that have ideas about whether dreams are meaningful, what they mean, if they're valuable to us in terms of evolution. And the honest answer is you, I'm going to present you with some information. You decide which theory you think best lines up with what you believe about dreams or which one you think is the most realistic. Uh, there are some commonalities that we can see in dreams. Lots of people have common dreams or similar dreams that occur um, sort of fairly often across the population. Um, typically, you're going to dream about stuff that you're worried about while you're awake. So whatever you're currently thinking about or dealing with, whatever's stressing you out while you're awake, tends to be what you're going to dream about while you're sleeping. Also, they, dreams typically involve things going wrong or things not going well. Not always, but a lot of the time th dreams involve uh, things going wrong for you. Um, also, there are some frequent dream themes that tend to reoccur. Um, dreams of falling or being chased. Dreams of public humiliation, like being naked or caught in your underwear in class. Uh, also, sex dreams are fairly common as well. So it's interesting to try to consider, like, why do these commonalities in dreams occur? Is it because we all have similar human experiences? Is it because our brains are constructed the same way? Is it because we have similar unconscious fears and desires? Is there some other reason for it? Uh, and the answer is we don't really know. Uh, the first perspective on dreaming that we're going to cover is from Sigmund Freud. We already talked about Freud when we talked about the levels of consciousness. So he also did a lot of work on dreams and studying dreams and using them to analyze a person's personality or issues while they were awake. He wrote a text on dreams called the interpretation of dreams. The text of this is available on my vision page. I read it to try to get some insight onto Freud's thinking to sort of boil it down for you. Uh, and I put it up there because I think it's interesting, but you are warned it is dense and kind of hard to get through. But it's pretty interesting anyway. Um, he was struck by how often his clients, because Freud was a therapist, he was a he was trying to help people overcome their issues in waking life. And people would describe their dreams quite frequently. And he decided that this means that dreams are, are a key component of understanding your personality and your waking life. He said the dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. And what this means is that he thinks dreams are bubbling out, or fears or desires or issues bubbling out of your unconscious and trying to communicate to your conscious mind. Uh, but the trick is, it has to go through all these layers of conscious awareness before it gets to your brain. So your unconscious is trying to talk to your conscious awareness, but it's not doing a very good job. So it needs to be interpreted. Uh, Freud analyzed his own dreams as a way to sort of practice or help to try to understand people's dreams and what they mean. He viewed everything in his dream in a dream as symbolic, meaning your dreams don't literally stand for what you're worried about. They represent something else or symbolize something else. He said that your unconscious we tend to be ashamed of or afraid of or unwilling to face the issues, the desires or fears that we have in our unconscious minds. So we'll censor ourselves and we'll make those messages from the unconscious look like something else in order to protect ourselves from those fears and desires we can't handle. So he said that dreams have two different kinds of content, the manifest and the latent. 
that manifest content is just literally what's in the dream. I'm dreaming about sharks chasing me in a boat. Okay, great. That's the manifest content. The latent content is what those things represent. That perhaps the boat is my family or my household, and the sharks are uh, my worries about changing to a new job or my fear of failure or something. So Freud would say that everything in your dream is going to stand for something deeper that's coming from your unconscious, but it's not going to be obvious. Dreaming about sharks to Freud doesn't mean I'm afraid of sharks. It means the sharks are representing something else that I'm truly afraid of. Um, some people believe that instead of having some kind of symbolic or deeper meaning, dreams are a useful way to express your creativity or to solve problems. And so you can think about a puzzle or a mind game or some complex issue that you're having, and then your dreams will help you solve that puzzle or come up with some kind of a solution for that issue. So I put a puzzle on the screen for you. You're welcome to write that mind teaser down, test it out, see if you can figure out the pattern uh, after you go to sleep and come back uh, next class and see whether you've got it right or not. On the polar opposite scale from Freud is a concept called activation synthesis theory. This was in the video that you guys watched as a preview to this unit or to this topic of instruction on sleep and dreams. But um, activation synthesis, synthesis theory is the idea that your pons, which is the little piece that's next to your cerebellum on your brainstem, um, your pons is creating a bunch of neural signals while you're in REM stage and sending them in waves across your cortex. And that this, your cortex then has to try to interpret these activations and synthesize them into some kind of coherent story or tale. Uh, basically, you're getting a bunch of random garbage being turned on in your brain and your mind has to try to figure out what to do with it so it builds it together into a story. So essentially what the activation synthesis theory theory people are saying is that dreams are totally arbitrary and meaningless. And the reason we tend to dream about common things, have common themes in our dreams, or dream more about the things that stress us out or that we worry about is because those things are more present in our conscious awareness. So they're easier to be activated by that pons when these random activations are going across our brains. Another theory of dreams that's similar to activation synthesis theory is called neurocognitive theory. Um, this is the idea that dreams are just a special type of thinking that's occurring without conscious awareness. So these people think that dreams are just composed of the, the what dreams come from, or the fact that your cortex is active, right? So it's related to activation synthesis theory that way, that you have activation in your frontal lobe and your cerebral cortex. You don't have a whole lot of external stimulation. You're laying in a quiet, dark room with your eyes shut. So your brain kind of has to make its own fun. We talked about that when we talked about uh, things like optical illusions, that your brain likes to have stimulation. So in the absence of stimulation, it's going to make its own. And last, you don't have conscious awareness because you're sleeping. So there's no control over your thinking. And the fact that your cortex is activated, you want something to do, and there's nobody in charge means that you get these random sort of silly dreams as a result. Uh, your emotions and your imagination can just run wild. So neurocogn neurocognitive theory um, says that your brain is sort of building these dreams out of the fact that it's sort of having a party when its parents aren't home, so to speak, because you don't have any consciousness. Um, that cognitive maturity is sort of key to this, that you have to have some development in your frontal lobe for dreams to be able to be built. Um, and they think that this is just sort of a byproduct of the way our brains are set up and that there's no real adaptive value to dreams at all. So Freud thinks that dreams have a value, right? That they communicate something about your unconscious or help you understand your personality better. Um, but the neurocognitive theory people think this is just a random byproduct of the fact that you're not conscious while you're sleeping. It's not important. It's not helping you survive in any kind of way. Uh, that they're totally meaningful, meaningless and arbitrary. Um, on this slide is just some steps on how to keep a dream diary. I did already go over these with you in October when I assigned the dream diary to you. So I'm not going to read these steps to you again, but I put it here as a reminder in case you haven't been keeping your dream diary like you're supposed to. You can, uh, you can start now or continue on in the future if you want to. Dream diaries are also a really good way to help yourself learn how to have lucid dreams, which I'll discuss on the next slide. Finally, lucid dreaming. I know this is something that some of you wanted to learn about because we had it on those uh, what are your interests kind of slides at the beginning of the school year. Um, but lucid dreaming means, lucid means uh, relating to light, right? So it's like, 
it's a Latin word meaning light or sunlight. Okay, but what it's referring to here, it's a symbol for consciousness. So lucid dreaming means dreaming while you're conscious. So you're aware that you're dreaming. You know that it's a dream and you can control it. It's really cool. It's difficult to do, though, because it's hard to regain consciousness in a dream and not just immediately wake up. Um, so there are some strategies to help teach yourself how to lucid dream. The first one is to track your dreams and get better at remembering them. Um, things like a dream diary, reminding yourself to dream every night. We've talked about some steps like this. If you're consistently keeping track of your dreams and recalling them, then you're more aware of what dreams you're having and when you're having them. And that awareness is key to regaining consciousness. Um, there's also the idea of a reality token. They kind of use this concept in the movie Inception, which I love because now I can refer to that. But having something that you can carry around or like draw a smiley face on your finger or wear a rubber band, carry a six-sided dice around in your pocket, whatever, that you tell yourself only exists when you're awake. So then you can dream and get into the habit of while you're awake checking your reality token, drawing a little picture on your finger in Sharpie and checking it every hour or two. Am I awake? Right? It gets you into this cognitive habit of checking for your reality token. And then you'll do it while you're dreaming, too, because you're in this habit, and it won't be there. And then that can be your signal for your brain to realize it's a dream, and you might be able to regain consciousness that way. I can't speak to whether it works or not. I haven't ever tried it. I have had a lucid dream before. It happened purely by accident. I was driving in a car in the dream, realized I was dreaming, took off flying out the front windshield, and flew up into the window of a karate dojo that was on the street next to me. Don't ask me why. And then woke up. So it wasn't very thrilling. Uh, but it did happen to me, and it was pretty cool. So you should experiment with lucid dreaming and see if you can make it work, and let me know how it works.